I'm Denise Dillenbeck, and I am the concertmaster of the Yakima Symphony Orchestra. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about what bowings are and how they work. Before we talk about bowings and how it is that everybody in the string section in the orchestra is playing using their bow in the same direction as everyone else in their section, I think we should first talk about the bow itself. This is my violin bow. You can see how it has a slight curve in the stick from one end to the other. And that is the likeness between this kind of bow and a bow and arrow kind of bow. There are a bunch of little parts to this bow, the machinery, which I'm gonna tell you about. First, we have the screw down here. When I turn the screw, it pulls this mechanism back, it, um, it threads on the screw. And this little guy is called the frog. The frog holds the horse hair in it, and that hair goes all the way down to the tip of the bow where it is um, fed into the tip there. The, the stick itself is wood, and there's a beautiful carved tip at the end of the bow, and then a little seal of ivory on top of where the hair goes in at the top. So when I tighten the screw, it pulls the frog back and you'll see the distance grow between the hair and the stick here. I'm going to tighten on the screw and you see that space grow. So as the frog gets pulled back, it tightens the hair, of the pull of the hair, and then the overall curve of the stick is lessened. My violin bow is a modern day bow, of course, and the mechanism for using it is based around tension. Just like with a, an, a bow and arrow bow where you pull the string back in order to get tension and then the arrow flies forward, we tighten the screw and that's what creates the tension on the hair as the stick gets tight, uh, flattened out. And then that's how I apply the horse hair to the strings of the violin to make a good sound. There's one more accessory that I need in order to make that whole process work. That is this little guy here. This is a cake of rosin. Rosin is sap from a tree that's basically cooked and hardened. And then we take that and we rub the hair on our bow across that rosin. And a white chalky dust creates a film across the horse hair. And that is what allows us to have friction when the hair touches the strings of the violin. The reason it's important to know all of the nitty gritty names and aspects of the bow before we start talking about bowing is because those little bits have a lot to do with how we actually use the bow. Parts of the bow are heavier and parts are lighter. So that's going to help me decide where and what direction I want to use the bow in. Down here, the, the part with the frog and the mechanism inside it with the screw and everything, this is the heaviest part of the bow. The whole bow is probably about 60 grams and this is very heavy, plus when we use it, our hand attaches here, which makes it even heavier. Now, as I move my bow across the strings of the violin, it gets lighter and lighter. And by the time I'm at the tip, with the frog being way away from the violin strings, the sound here is gonna be very light, and it's gonna be very light for me to use the bow in my hand. When I wanna make loud sounds, heavy sounds, accented sounds, I'm gonna use the heavy part of the bow to do that. So I'm gonna play at the frog. If I did that up here, I have less control over the bow up here and it's also a lot lighter. Um, now you might have heard that it's a little bit bouncy sounding when I'm at the tip. When I throw the bow at the string, the light part tends to bounce. You can see that bounciness. If I try to throw the frog at the string, it's not really gonna bounce, it's too heavy. It's just gonna be heavy and accented. So those two factors are gonna determine a lot in how I decide whether to go down or up, whether to use the frog or the tip um, and everything in between. If I want to play a long, sweet melody and have it be really smooth, the word we use for that in music is legato, I might start it on an up bow to sneak in and not be too loud. So 
So those are just some examples of how the weight and feel of the bow determines how we choose to use it. As a concert master, part of my job is figuring out how we use the bow as a string section. I will go through the music before we start rehearsals and write in symbols over every single note that needs direction for all of us to know whether we're going up or down and with some little hints as well, whether we're doing legato or doing a bouncy bow stroke, all of those sorts of things. A lot of that will depend on the style of the music, what period in history it's from, what kinds of sounds the composer is conjuring up. So the bow is really the most automatic and deliberate way that we can be artistic as string players. It's like our paintbrush. We can be like Monet with lots of little dots filling in the colors on the canvas, or we can make a big, gorgeous, romantic style painting with swashbuckling violin bow strokes. Once I have figured out the whole map of how we use the bow for my part, the first violin part, that part then gets shared with all the other principles of the other string sections. So the principal second violin, principal viola, principal cello, and principal bass will all get copies of the, the map that I've created of those bowings. And then each of those people gets to figure out how their part interacts with mine and when they want to be matching me and when they're not and they're doing something different. And then they likewise write in symbols for their sections to show how to all play together at the same time. Bowing technique is probably fundamentally the most important thing about playing a string instrument. Sure, the left hand looks flashy up here. It, it moves around and it makes the pitches happen and it just looks really athletic and cool and so it gets a lot of attention. We get vibrato here, we do double stops and um, even left hand pizzicato can happen here, but it's really all about the bow. The bow and our using of it with our right hand is what makes our sound, which is very personal, our tone quality. It's what we use to develop phrases. It's, it's basically how we sing. And every technique that we'll use in any piece comes down to the sound and how we use our bow. There was a really wonderful violinist in the last century named Lucien Capet, a French violinist, who wrote a great book on violin bowing technique. And I'll leave you with a beautiful quote by Mr. Capet. He said, in order to make the performance of a composition as varied as possible, it is essential to develop all the possibilities of the right hand because the perfect reproduction of a violin piece is not only based on the technique of the left hand, but above all on the bowing. Mr. Capet was definitely right, and I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the bow with me.